The timing must be perfect. I can't let my anxiety cause me to make last-minute mistakes. It took me almost six months to get it right. I can't ruin everything now. I'm Alicia Walker, I just turned 45, and I'm about to make a major lifestyle change. I've been married to Bill Walker for just over 20 years. We dated and then were engaged for another five years. We have one daughter who is in college. This Friday evening marks the 25th anniversary of our first date. He's sentimental about these things. Bill organized a special dinner for us at our favorite restaurant. Unfortunately, he will receive the biggest and most terrible surprise of his life. Even now, I love this big guy. The first few years of our marriage were perfect. I had no doubt that we would spend our whole lives together. Oh, we had to work a lot and share responsibilities, especially after the birth of our daughter Elizabeth. Bill made me leave my job until she was old enough to go to school. When I returned to work, our main goals were paying for college for Elizabeth and saving for retirement. Our bank accounts soared. Thanks to rising income from promotions and pay raises, Bill's wise investments, and inheritances from our deceased parents. I fully supported Bill during this time. Although we sometimes disagreed, we never fought. We made love regularly and had sex several times when one or both of us were particularly horny. I never ever thought about cheating on him. Although I was regularly pestered by men in the office and even at neighborhood gatherings. This was not what I wanted. Bill suited me. Now I have to admit that I am a hypocrite. I publicly condemned cheaters, but I loved listening to the details of their adventures. I've heard of women suffering from empty nest syndrome. Women were supposed to go emotionally crazy and become sluts or nuns. Personality supposedly changes overnight. Personally, I thought it was nonsense. I believed that not having children at home was a chance to strengthen Bill and I's marriage. Elizabeth was largely independent before she went to college. She rarely came home before bed. We've almost gotten used to the fact that she was herself. I saw no reason to prepare to change anything in my life. Perhaps I should have. Having more time to reflect on myself has given me time to consider whether men still find me attractive. Finally, I decided to do something I haven't done for a long time. I looked in the full-length mirror, without clothes. Where there used to be smooth skin, I had wrinkles. What previously stood out on its own now sagged. What was once flat has become a cupcake. What was once wide now deserved a wide sign. I began to pay attention to men's compliments and double hints. Either I wasn't paying attention, or the interest of men other than my husband had waned. I started working out more, wearing more makeup and dressing to highlight my best features, my breasts. The men's admiration increased. I felt better. And yet I felt like I needed something more, something different, something exciting, something playful and risky. I started reading cheating stories and watching adult films on the internet. I began to pay more attention to myself and less to imagine my husband as a lover. When I analyzed what was happening at home, I did not see any difference in the way my husband treated me compared to the way he treated me before Elizabeth left. This was the problem. Everything was the same as always. Oh, I received compliments from him. He never missed a birthday or anniversary. We still had sex regularly, but it was the same old compliments and the same old sex. Nice. But it felt like a rerun rather than the original episodes. I wanted change, a boost of energy. I thought I was giving Bill a chance to give me a change. I tried to interest Bill in different sex positions and different techniques to spice things up. The poor guy tried, but there was no excitement for me. The sexual activities were different and all were well, but it was still the same old Bill with his old familiar and predictable actions. Actions that did not bring me the desired result, but I wanted more. I wanted to feel an explosion of emotions and feel complete release, and everything that I showed Bill was not real, it was only an imitation of what I wanted. I don't think he realized this. It was then that I first thought about finding someone who could give me a thrill, maybe even become my lover. My priority in finding a new partner was, first of all, mystery. If I were caught, it would kill me because it would destroy my family, and I don't want to lose my husband and daughter. This meant no fake late nights at work or overnight business trips. Hotels or overnight stays with him or me were considered too dangerous for me. 
I started to think that this must be an office romance during working hours. But even this will require careful planning. Looking through my options from the office, I ruled out almost all men. There were a couple of nice single men, but I heard them bragging about the sluts they were dating, including some married women. I couldn't let them brag about me. Every day at home became more and more painful. Our routine has come to a standstill. Something had to change. Otherwise, I would go crazy. Then this happened, or rather, I met him. His name was Darnell. Darn for short. Some other men said, damn, and then laughingly apologized for getting his name wrong. About six months ago, he took a mid-level position in the office. All the women paid attention to his appearance and charm. I was afraid that several women would try to rape him. They did it with their eyes, of course. Although he flirted a little, he never seemed to seek any kind of relationship beyond the friendly and professional. I noticed that he held his gaze and smiled for several seconds when he looked at me. My heart was fluttering and I was looking forward to meeting him. For several days in a row, he came to me for small talk and asked something about my husband and daughter, very carefully and without causing alarm to any of the employees. The first change in our relationship came when he asked to sit with me at lunch. I knew this could be the first step towards what I thought I wanted, so I agreed. He immediately said, I hope this doesn't mean that the office gossip machine will now consider us a couple. I laughed and explained, I will take risks. I could use a little excitement in my life right now. I don't think I meant, at least consciously, to let him know that there was something missing in my life, but it came out. It's too late to return everything back, even if I wanted to. Our contacts continued to be short and casual. I learned that his wife, Mary Alice, was wealthy and had no children. He spoke well of her, but not with love. Her family didn't want her to marry him. If they fought, she liked to use the fact that she married him against the family's wishes, so he should be grateful. I told him about my daughter and how proud I was of her. I described my relationship with my husband as comfortable, predictable, and unchanging. Gradually, I let him know that I was not happy with my home life. In the end, I hinted at the lack of enjoyable sex with my husband. I didn't tell Darnell that I needed another man for sex. He himself guessed what I needed. Darnell made it clear to me that he wanted us to be more than just friendly colleagues. I timidly admitted that I felt the same way, knowing full well what path I was embarking on. We have taken precautions. We tried not to look longingly at each other, no touching or overt flirting. We thought everyone thought we were friends who were happily married to other people. As a smokescreen, I even teased Ted, the other man in our office, about being my office husband, and told him that he had to up his game to stay married to me. The distraction seemed to have worked. The situation finally escalated on the day when we accidentally found ourselves in the elevator alone. Darn pressed the stop button. I guessed correctly why. He brazenly attacked me with a passionate kiss, which I readily responded to. Hands quickly explored each other's bodies. In the following minutes, everything was forgotten except for enjoying each other. I didn't want to look away when he released the button and the elevator started moving. He only said, we need to talk. I nodded my head and said yes, that I was ready to wait for the meeting. That day, I wanted to do nothing but think about the time we spent in the elevator. There was a slight feeling of guilt, but the feeling of I want more overshadowed my guilt. Darn called me and suggested that I tell my husband that I would have to stay a few minutes today. I wondered if he wanted to take our sexual explorations further this evening. I hoped so. He came into my office and immediately stated that we needed to hurry and that it was not customary to stay late. There were no attempts on his part to approach me. Instead, we talked. We agreed that we both wanted to be intimate with each other, but we had to be extremely careful about it. We both went home and started thinking about a safe way to do what we wanted. I've read that women who cheat often tell their spouses that the marriage isn't damaged because the husband still has sex with her whenever he wants. They did not notice that they were deceiving their husband outside the bedroom I immediately began to feel differently about Bill without even realizing it. 
I guess I wanted to find faults in him so that I wouldn't feel guilty when I was with my lover. After the episode in the elevator, I was almost constantly mentally with my potential lover. Works, which Bill did at home, which were minor irritants that I previously did not pay attention to, have now become a point of contention. When I raised problems, I raised them loudly. Things that I would usually ask him to do and knew he would eventually do, now earned me nagging if they weren't done quickly. I was becoming a bitch. Meanwhile, Darnell came up with a solution for our meetings. He rented a small vacant space on the floor above us, in an office building. I asked how he could afford it. He replied, This is the advantage of a rich wife. I didn't complain. We received some basic furniture, most importantly a large sofa with an easy-to-wash cover. We tested it as soon as we could. Sex with Darnell turned out to be even better than expected. He was bigger than Bill, and I got a lot of pleasure and complete release from sex. We were euphoric, and both said the L word. I'm sure what we really meant was lust, not love. From then on, when we had breaks to meet, we left the table at different times. One was climbing the stairs, and the other was riding the elevator. We were never together when we went to or came back from our love nest. Our days and times for sex were random and varied. From time to time, we took a few days off to reduce the chance of getting caught. We tried to think through all the ways our spouses could catch us. We constantly checked for cameras or recording devices in the office and at home. We never emailed or texted each other. Darnell bought us special phones that we only used to talk to each other. If our spouses saw the phone, we had to tell them that it was only a work phone. We chose passwords that were not associated with our families, and that would be easy to guess. We thought of everything, it would seem. As my relationship with Darnell grew, so did my desire to be with him all the time. I still loved Bill, but he no longer made me feel the way Darnell did. Bill was an old pair of comfortable slippers that you didn't want to throw away. Darnell was a new pair of overpriced shoes that I just had to have. Darn was the first to talk about how we could be together forever. Together, we developed a definite plan. We accidentally told our spouses that one of our friend's spouses had suddenly died. Despite the presence of a will, the accounts in the name of the deceased spouse were frozen, so the remaining spouse could not immediately access them. The trial took more than six months, and the living spouse had to borrow money until the inheritance issue was resolved. We said that this could have been avoided if their bank accounts were in both their names. Mary Alice agreed to finally prove to Darnell that she, unlike her family, believed he was not a gold digger. In our case, Bill took the hint and we both added each other's names to our existing accounts. It was he who suggested that the safe in which old jewelry, gold coins, and savings bonds were kept should also be registered in both of our names. I rewarded him with one of the best nights of sex I've had in a long time. It may have been Bill's body, but in my mind, it was Darnell. I didn't realize how differently I felt about Bill until Elizabeth arrived. Both Bill and I were glad to see her. The three of us laughed and told stories from her childhood. It was like traveling back in time. She took me aside and said that my father told her that I had been moody lately and he was asking what was wrong. Liz mentioned that I seemed normal to her during this meeting. I said her father was probably right about something. I admitted that I was in a bad mood and suggested that I might be going through menopause. I assured her that our marriage was as strong as ever. It hurt me to lie to my daughter, but I couldn't tell her the truth yet. When Darnell and I had a chance to talk afterward, I told him that I thought Bill was starting to worry about me. I said that I think we should make plans to be together sooner than we talked about it before. What we came up with was very unfair to Bill and Mary Alice, but we've already changed it, so what the hell? We were going to take all the money we could and disappear together. For them, it wouldn't be so cruel. Both of our spouses had access to a lot of money, Bill through his job and Mary Alice through her family. Neither of them will suffer financially for too long. Darnell didn't like Mary Alice's family, so he didn't mind taking the family money. I came up with some unworthy excuse to justify robbing my husband, as if he were blind. I tried to get him to change, but nothing worked. 
I didn't want to think about it. I focused on going away with my lover and doing whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted, wherever we wanted. Stop traveling down memory lane. It's almost time. I called the restaurant and verified that Bill had indeed made a reservation for 6 my p.m. And so it was, and the bottle of our favorite wine was already cooling. Bill said he would have to stay a little late at work and would meet me there. At 15.30, I was at our bank. I gave the girl my ID and told her I wanted to withdraw all our money from our joint accounts. When she looked at our bills, a puzzled expression appeared on her face. I think you and your husband may have gotten confused. He was there earlier today and had already withdrawn almost all the money. When so much money is withdrawn, we are asked to ask why, in case it has something to do with customer service. According to a note on the computer, he said he was afraid the stock market would crash and wanted to pay in cash for a while. The person who carried out the operation tried to reassure him that the money was safe, but your husband insisted. What about a safe deposit box? He may have put cash in there, but I don't work in that department. Do you see a man in a brown jacket near the elevator? He can help you there? Do you have the key to the locker with you? Yes. I approached the man and was asked to sign the registration register. As I did this, I noticed Bill's signature. Several names ahead of mine. Either he put the money in the drawer or he beat me to empty it. Big difference. Huge. I went downstairs and we opened the door to the cell. I waited with trepidation for what I would find. I was very nervous. Our box was placed on the table, and I was left alone to open it. My heart sank. There was nothing in it, except for the letter. Alicia, if you're reading this, you know that I beat you to it with our money. Darnell should also find out now the same thing. When Mary Alice and I found out what you and Darnell were up to, we began to think about what to do. Although we thought about divorce, we realized that your plan was better. Abscond with the money and disappear. You two hid your affair very well. If you want to blame someone for us finding out about this, blame the telemarketer who called you on your other cell phone while you were in the other room. Obviously, you turned off the sound, but not the vibration alert. When I pulled that scam phone out of your purse, I saw that it was a telemarketer calling you. For a while, I didn't think anything about it, but then I just became curious. Why did you need a second phone? There may be several good reasons, but I immediately thought of one terrible reason. To hide the affair. I considered this reason as a justification for your recent behavior, but I did not hint to you that I was beginning to doubt, despite other signs of betrayal. Remember when I bought that box of gel pens because I kept losing pens? I gave you a few and scattered many around the house so I could find them when I needed a pen. So in each pen, there was a transmitter that sent all conversations to my computer. I made sure that you always have one pen in your bag. It took us a few days to find out the whole story, but we did. In the process of planning together, we tried to help each other heal our broken hearts and fell in love. At first it was revenge sex, but then it grew into something more. The idea of going off to a romantic location with an exciting new lover was stolen from you two, but it suited us just fine, especially since you both thought it was good enough for you. I sent Liz my side of the story so in a couple of days she'll know what's going on. I assured her that I would make sure that the remainder of her tuition was paid for. She'll probably want to talk to you as soon as she gets the information. I told her about you and Darnell, so be prepared. As Mary Alice and I travel the world together, we'll be keeping an eye on you guys. I'm not sure you'll find the money to start traveling, especially since your boss has been notified that you're dating during work hours. We will send postcards if you cannot make it. By the way, Mary Alice and I recently canceled your airline ticket. I don't think you'll want to leave the country without cash or credit cards. One of the things I told Mary Alice that I didn't tell you was that I had a nickname that I got in elementary school. I was called Toad after I played the role of a frog in a school play. This fact made me think about another way to part with a loved one not mentioned in the Simon and Garfunkel song. My version of what we do is, take it for the road, Toad. I'm sure this isn't funny to you or Darnell. It's a pity. We like it. I think I should thank you for almost 20 years of marriage and a wonderful daughter. 
Somehow, hearing what you really think of me as a husband and lover and what you plan to do to me makes it difficult for me to play well. Either way, I hope sex with Darnell was worth it. At least you still have it. Goodbye, Bill and Mary Alice.